tonight, I just want to focus, and this, is, this may be somewhat of a reminder. Um, after Sunday, I was like, Lord, sometimes I, I leave my Pastor Todd's sermons or myself, I'll go home and I'll think about it, I'll be like, how do I do that? How do I, and I, I know we explain it, but still, you're like, how does this process work? And so when I was driving home, um, the scripture, the, the Philippians 4.8 came up, where it's talking about our thoughts, what we're supposed to think about. And how we're supposed to think. Not just what, but how we're supposed to be motivated in thought. And we focus on ourselves and what it looks like to abide in the vine and all that stuff. And I want you guys to think about thinking. That's a dumb way to say that. That's, I want you to think about how we think. What we think. Why we think. And it sounds philosophical, but it's really not. It's really quite simple when you get into scripture. Martin Luther, the old reformer, was once quoted as saying, while you cannot prevent, prevent birds from flying over your head, you can prevent them from building a nest in your hair. So we can't prevent the birds from pooping on us. But if they start nesting in our heads, we, we let that happen. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? You just wash your car. And it's like they got a target on you. <laughs> or you wash your car and it rains. And we talked about Sunday a little bit, how we control things that happen in our lives. Again, this all starts with the mind. You ever notice more money now in America is spent on mental health when the Lord's taught us that the warfare is in the mind? That if we're submitted to the spirit, that's where the war begins and ends. If, if we know how Christ thinks of us, I know how to think. Paul actually said, I have the mind of Christ. If I have the mind of Christ, therefore, I claim that promise to say, Lord, no, I'm not going to be in mental disease anymore in Jesus' name. I'm not going to have mental oppression anymore. I'm going to walk and abide in who you are, right? And so <clears throat> did you know that the average person has 10,000 thoughts a day? A day! They didn't, they didn't survey males. There's no way men are thinking 10,000 times a day. 10 or 20, max, right? Or at least the ones we remember, right? 10, 20 tops. Right? I remember maybe five things today that I was thinking about, right? But we have 10,000, the average person, 10,000 thoughts a day. Do you know what that equates to over the year? Three and a half million thoughts. Three and a half million thoughts. That's three and a half million chances for you to either think fleshy or spiritually. And this isn't even a condemnation. What we're going to show you tonight is we're not saying thou shalt not. We're saying, no, abide in the vine and let him impregnate your mind with what is good. Because there's no law against that. Right? So this is actually going to be a fun one, I think. Um, It's three and a half million chances to figure out What is a lie or what is the truth? It's three and a half million chances to bring thoughts into obedience to God. It's three and a half million chances. uh, And there was a saying I just read, two thoughts cannot occupy the mind at the same time. So the choice is ours whether uh, or not our thoughts will be constructive or destructive. The choice is ours to say, look, I'm going to take that thought on because I think it's a good thing. And sometimes we're bothered in our minds by the filter we have. Right? Because we all have a, a, a filter sometimes. And 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6 says this, um, <clears throat> For though we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh. For the, we all know the scripture, but watch this. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. And it says here that strongholds are in the mind. Strongholds are in the mind. And here's how we know that. Verse 5 says this, We are destroying speculations. The King James says, uh, we're casting down imaginations. Here in this, this version, it's we're destroying uh, uh, speculations, conspiracies. Does the term conspiracy today have a positive connotation? Why? Why? Because it's usually associated with the word theory. Conspiracy theory. So in other words, we're thinking these things up. We're imagining these things happening. Does this make sense? Did you guys know what the word speculations means? An unsolid or fanciful opinion or reason, which means an attack on faith. So in other words, we're supposed to destroy speculations. I'm supposed to destroy what attacks my faith. You know, the number one thing that attacks your faith is your mind, your reasons. 
I know, Lord, you, your word says you would provide, but there is no way earthly possible. How many of you guys have said that? In your, I have. I'll be honest. Our earthly reasoning, and I've said this quote before, Benjamin Franklin once said, to see through the eye of faith, you must first, first shut off the eye of reason. You got to shut your brain off and trust faith. You got to trust what's not you. Again, the word faith connotates something impossible. That we're asking God to heal our physical bodies. What we pay thousands of, sometimes millions of dollars to have doctors heal. And God can do it because he wants to. Because he's gracious and good. Right? So we have to shut off our reason. It says this, we're destroying speculations. And every lofty, every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. you know what the word lofty means? A high barrier. Every high thing that exalts itself against God's word tear it down. And again, it all begins in here. That promise can't be for me. There is no way. I am such a sinner. There is no way God could ever bless me. For a long time, I was lied to about the word of the Lord. I didn't know God wanted to bless us. I didn't understand any of that stuff. I just said, hey, I'm a servant. He's my, he's my Lord. That's it. Until a friend of mine in 2013 preached to me one time. He called me out of the crowd, which is, have you guys ever been called out in a crowd before? It happens here all the time, right? It's kind of embarrassing. And I didn't know any of these people. And he said, you, man of God, God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And it was like one of those, like, uh, (laughs) you know, one of those moments. Like, he went from my Lord to being my father that night. I understood something. He wasn't just my Lord giving me directives. He was my father that actually loved me. And I understood something that night. Then I could claim the promises of God because he gave them to me. Amen? We're supposed to destroy every lofty thing raised against the knowledge of God, and we're taking every thought captive. You know what the word captive simply means? I'm bringing it under control. Have you ever taken your kids captive in a grocery store? Or the mall or the toy aisle? Some of us take them captive with a belt into the bathroom. Amen. I know. I've done it. (laughs) Right? Taking them captive, holding them in subjection, that thought will not penetrate my head. I will make it obedient to God. I will say, no, Lord, that is a lie from the pit, and I have to make it obedient to what your word says. So let's read Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever thing is true, whatsoever thing is honorable, holy smokes, whatever thing is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there's any excellence, if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Dwell. That word's going to be a key focus tonight. And guys, I only have a page of notes, so this should be an hour tops. kidding. The things you have learned and received and heard. Listen to this. This is verse 9. The things which you've learned, the things which you've received, the things which you've heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Sometimes we're looking for peace because we want peace because God said he would give us peace that passes all understanding, right? But if we're not constantly having our minds subjected to God, we can't understand the God of peace. Because we constantly put ourselves in turmoil. Does this make sense? We're putting ourselves in those situations. Which is why I prayed that tonight. Lord, I want to break the habitual crap in our lives. might not even be sin. It could be thought processes. It could be how, I'm going to be honest with you, it could be how I sleep. I've been really analyzing how I sleep. How I, Guys, you, I, this is how crazy it gets. I hate monotony so much that I change how I shower every day. If I shower the first day, I, I don't shower the first, you know what I mean? I switch up my routines constantly because I hate monotony. Put me behind a desk, I'm dead bored. It is hard to be behind a desk, right? So being the social butterfly, I go out and talk to everyone and write sermons and bug Pastor Todd for four hours a day, you know, that kind of stuff. Have fun, right? So I know what it's like for me to be monotonous Right, But that monotony, that constant overdoing and doing and doing and doing, expecting a different result is what? Insanity. It says that the things you've heard and learned 
Let's break this down for a minute. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. The word true means a trusted word or a thing. How many of us, how many of us actually trust God's word? How many of us find it hard to trust God's word? You don't have to raise your hand. It's hard to trust God's word sometimes, right? Because maybe you've been praying for a long time about a promise or a miracle and it hasn't happened, right? How come that bro got blessed the first time he prayed? And for me, it's been 20 years, right? My dad, when he got saved, God broke the curse of alcoholism, smoking, and he used to beat my mom that night. That night, he, he never, he gets around people who smoke and yes, he, he pukes because it just, he, it just, he loathed and he used to, he used to physically harm my mom. He'd be so drunk and smoking. He said that, that night something broke in him. And he, he loves telling that story. Well, for people who constantly struggle with those things, they're like, you punk, I wish I had that kind of promise. You know what I mean? It's hard to trust God's word sometimes, but... Your feelings, your trusting who you are, you're using fleshy reason to understand God's word. God's word's eternal. He spoke all this into existence before you were even born, which means his word stands true no matter what. My feelings, my circumstance does not dictate his word. It can't dictate his word. Now, let's flip the script a little bit. What has he blessed you with that others don't even have yet? You who say, man, I didn't get those prayers answered, right? we got to start thinking about what is true, a trusted word. Whatever is honorable. The word honorable means respect and reverence for character or reverent to something. You know what that means? I honor you guys. I honor prayer ministers. I honor people who labor in the word. I love to honor people who work hard. I love people with businesses. I love people with work ethics. I love people who elevate me. I love people who challenge me. Um, I love people who... Who, who, who train me in something. I just, I love to honor. When someone does well, I love honoring them publicly. I love it because there's something cool about thinking about what is honorable, to respect them. And, and all that does, and you know what it does and it produces in other people? Reverence and honor and respect. You develop a culture when you continue to do that. So if you have people around you who don't reverence and honor and respect, but what they do is backbite. They may backbite against their wives, their jobs, their situations, uh, their, 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 their finances. They constantly backbite. But if they're not honoring God, you'll always hear that negative voice. But when you start to honor the Lord about, no, Lord, I'm thankful for where I'm at right now, but I thank you for where you've taken me. I honor who you are, Lord. I honor those around me. Father, I pray that if they're not going to think that way, I want to think that way and bless them, Lord, so that they can get saved, so they can see my witness. So to think on things that are honorable. It says think on things that are right. The word right means uh, virtuous, faultless. Who's the only faultless person? Yeah. I'm supposed to think about him. He's the right one. He's the one without spot or wrinkle or blemish. He's the one that chose the bride. We're going to be talking about that on Sunday. He's the one that chose, right? So if he's perfect and true and just, I'm supposed to keep my eyes fixed on the author. See, this is what's cool is you don't have to mirror anybody else except him. When you do that, you'll be in unity. It's great to be in unity. You don't have to model another minister you don't have to model what the people are doing in churches. I was actually going to ask that how many people want to get set free in worship? Like, I, you want to learn how to worship with your arms, your heart's abandoned, arms up. Amen. Oh, yeah, you. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> Buddy, I can hear you in Texas. <laughs> You're so awesome. I was just talking about you yesterday with Bob. He, he really talks bad about you. I'm going to talk to him. <laughs> real fast whatsoever thing is pure think on things that are pure what does the word pure mean pure from carnality things that are chaste and things that are modest not extremism I'm a man of extremes can I be blunt I'm a zero or a hundred kind of a guy there's no middle ground with me I mean I have two speeds fast and stop so I've always been that way. My wife hates that. She's like, can't you just find a middle ground? What does middle ground mean? If I'm going to eat, eat, my gosh. 
If I'm going to live, live, man. The world is ready for me. I want to go see it, you know? And when I sleep, I can't hear a thing, man. My son was up last night. He burned his hand or something, and he was all, like, crying and whatever. And I couldn't hear a thing. Couldn't hear a thing. My wife, she was, he was up at three, at two, at six. And I was like, it was a great night, babe. Holy smokes. Kids were great. Oh, I love this. You know, like I'm a zero hundred kind of guy, but here I'm saying, I'm supposed to think about things that are modest here. I'm supposed to be self-controlled, right? And I've literally been asking God for this for the last year. Lord, I need to learn this moderation, self-control, what it means. And he's working on me guys. He's answering prayer. He's working on me and he's changing me. It was actually Rick Evans that just told me, when you pray for things, don't expect the bad to happen. Like when we pray for patience, you've heard those pet sermons, when you pray for patience, he'll put you in a situation to develop patience. How come when we pray for healing, we don't expect him to make us more sick to get healing? Patience is from him. Blessing is from him. Confidence is from him. Amen? So think about that. What's modest? What's pure? Think about things that are lovely. Do you know that in scripture, that's really the only time the word lovely is used? Whatsoever things are lovely, acceptable and pleasing. What's acceptable and pleasing? Think about those things. I love thinking about my wife. And I love thinking about how perfect she is. To me, she's the most perfect person on earth. To me, I don't see a flaw in her. I don't. I really don't. I, I, I really honor her for who she is. Do we get on each other's nerves? Of course. I would get on my own nerves. I know. I know that. But when I think about her, I think about, man, the things she does for our kids. and all that. I, I just love showing my wife. I love presenting and talking about her, right? I love thinking about things that are lovely. I love that. I, I think it's cool. Whatsoever things are of good repute or good report. You know what good repute means? Whatsoever things you're supposed to think about, things spoken in a kindly spirit or with goodwill towards others. I think that's the biggest thing, and I don't know why, but that's been a theme here. Have you noticed that for a couple weeks? We've been really talking about be careful of the voices and deception and division. Um, Be careful how we speak of one another, right? Because your intentions may be well, but the road to hell is paved with (laughs) with good intentions, right? Right? Be careful. Think on things about, like, instead of thinking about what's bad about our bosses, what's good about them? Let's focus on that. Let God chisel away the bad. Amen? Or how about our workers, our coworkers, or our friends? Or the people that just annoy us? And you know what I'm talking about. You know those people that annoy you? And if you're not laughing, it's because you're probably the annoying. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Think about what's goodwill towards others. If there's any excellence, the Bible says. You know what excellence means? Moral goodness. If there's anything that's morally good, right? Morally good. What, what's good out there, right? I love Christmas. My favorite time of the year, Christmas. It's the most covetous time of the year, right? I love Christmas. Christmas is awesome. You know why? I love seeing people give. I love seeing people be like family. I love uh, hanging up trees, not hanging up trees, putting up trees, hanging up lights. You know, I I, I like doing all that fun stuff and then seeing my kids uh, love and hate their gifts Christmas morning. Now that's underwear, okay. Where's the games? Right, I love it. I love what's morally good about Christmas. The, the, the story of Christmas and why we celebrate it, the birth of our Savior. I love this time of year. It's probably one of the funnest times. I like Thanksgiving too, but in a different way, you know? But Christmas is like thing, a thing for me, and I love thinking about morally, Christ came because we couldn't fulfill the law of God in our own self. And that God sent his son to die for me. But first he had to be birthed in as a man and take on our reproaches so that he could die to save us. What a story, man. I love thinking about that. You know what else is morally good? How far he's brought you. Dude, when you all sit back and think on your testimonies, King David once said, I've, 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 I've thought on thy testimonies of old Lord and I've comforted myself. Sometimes you're going through a trial. Think about where he's brought you. And if he's brought you there once, he can do it again. Morally excellent. If there's anything worthy of praise, a commendable thing. 
dwell on these things. The word dwell means to think, to deliberate, to calculate, to reckon and reason with, to dwell. When we dwell in the house of the Lord, when we dwell in our own uh, houses, we dwell, we sit in it, we love resting in it, we love being at peace in it, right? We love cooking in it, we love having family in it, our houses, right? We love to dwell in it. Well, we're supposed to dwell in those kinds of thoughts. We're supposed to have peace in the things that are pure, just, honest, right, uh, of good report. We're not supposed to hear the bad report, which is why I keep saying, you'll be so much happier if you turn off your TV. You'll be so much happier if you turn off the voice of those who don't edify you, but they seek to bring you down. And it's not that you hate them. It's just you can't be around that junk and hear the word of the Lord at the same time. Because our flesh tends to go to the negative, doesn't it? It always does. It wants to go that way. And unless you're strengthened in the word, you're not going to fight it well. You know, there had to be a time where I had to put away TV, and I, I don't even really like TV anymore. We have them, but we don't have cable, and I rarely ever sit down in front of it. But guys, I got to the point where I was watching TV every night, not reading the Word anymore because I was eating chips and salsa, amen? Watching TV shows. And one day, I just felt so convicted one night, I had crumbs all over my chest, and I'm like, what am I doing, Lord? You know? And I had to put away the TV, and I did. We turned off cable. We, we got rid of the TV and all that other stuff. And I said, Lord, I'm going to seek you. I want to seek you in these times. And he so blessed me. And I don't even think about that crap anymore. I just don't want to. I just want him. Guys, think about this. We're going to live for eternity, and we have a short time here. Shouldn't we be living for eternity? I'm not saying don't enjoy what we have here. God's given, blessed us so much with things. But I think we should live how we want to see happen in heaven. Let your will be done on earth, Lord, as it is in heaven. Lord, we should be so that way. Not heads in the clouds type stuff, not weirdo stuff. Because he's cool. God is awesome. And I love you guys. I like hanging out and going, going out to eat and, and, and partaking with you guys. And, and I do. I, I think it's awesome. But we should live like every day could be your last. And did we speak those things we needed to speak? Did we ask for forgiveness where we needed to? Did we reconcile with that person we said we would? Uh, Did we uh, give honor and glory to God for the day? Did we wake up in thanksgiving and praise? Or did we wake up all angry and stuff? It's easy to do it. We do it all the time. Sometimes we don't realize it. You know what? The habit I'm breaking now, Can I? again, I love being honest with you guys because you don't judge me. And if you do, sorry. (laughs) Waking up in the morning and not doing this. Put it away. Lord, you deserve my mornings, my evenings, my midday, my everything. This shouldn't be the first thing I look at. And this thing to me, you know what's crazy? Old preachers didn't need this, and they reached millions. They didn't need email, and they reached millions. Where's our dependency, right? Be careful what you put your mind on. Verse 9 says this, These things you've learned and received and heard and seen me practice these things. This verse and what I'm talking about tonight is not a thou shalt not type of scripture, but that there's so much more that you will fill yourself with what is good. There's so much more in Christ that if you fill yourself with these thoughts, there's so much more abundant in God, right? Galatians 5, this is the last scripture. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love. We all know this, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. There is no limit or no end to how much you can have of those gifts. There's no limit or no end to how much you can think about things that are pure and righteous and just. And the reason why I wanted to preach this tonight, again, this may be a a summary for some of you guys. You may have already been thinking about this stuff, but I need this kind of teaching every day in my life because it's easy to get caught up in the weeds when you're dealing with people's problems. Sometimes, I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but when you meet with people, you kind of carry their burden a little bit and you got to shuck that off because it's not your burden. It's not yours to take. It's not yours to fix. It's the Lord's to fix. That's why I love inner healing. And so I have to look, Lord, keep me pure. Keep my thoughts pure because, Lord, if they're not pure, I'm giving them fleshy reason to get out of their mess, and that's not good. I need you. Amen? I want everybody to stand up. Did you guys get something? Hopefully you received something good. I said I wanted to keep it short because I know that we've we've prayed and preached, and this Sunday um, we're going to be talking about the beauty of the bride. Guys, that's such a cool topic, the beauty of the bride. And I want you guys to ask yourself this question. If you were Jesus, what would you want your bride to look like when you come back for it? 
It's going to be awesome. And guess what? You are his bride. Don't think about it as, am I the bride? You are because you're his. So let's honor the groom. Amen? Let's honor the groom. And so I want to pray us out tonight, not, not for anything specific, but tonight I really wanted to bless this place. I want to bless what God is doing in your lives. I want to bless the seeds he's planted. Guys, do we have any testimonies recently of healings and miracles and these kinds of things over the last couple of weeks? Do we have testimonies? I want to get with somebody here to record those. Ralph was telling me about it today. We did some things on Sunday. It would have been cool to get them down. But guys, we have so much to be thankful for. This season that we're walking into now is just a place of, of, of thankfulness and gratitude for what Christ did for being born. And if you're analytical, yeah, it wasn't December. Okay, but the, 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 it's, it's here. This is the holiday, right? Let's just think with me. Ride with me here, right? That, that we have such an opportunity to be the light of Christ, even when it's dark, even when we see so much junk out there, right? <clears throat> and so I want to bless us all tonight. And so if you guys wouldn't mind, I want you guys to just uh, start praying right now. And I want to bless uh, and if you, if you want to just get in tongues or whatever you want to do, I just want to bless tonight. I want to bless this church for the seasons that we're walking into. Lord, you're so good. King David said that you, you never repaid me to, me to my face my sins. You never... You could have easily done it. Lord, if you wanted to take us out, you could have done it. For those of you in this room who, who are struggling to hear his voice, if he wanted to take you out, he could have. But he doesn't because he's long-suffering and patient and kind and merciful. And it's his kindness that leads you to repentance. Lord, I bless every person in this church who come on Wednesdays and Sundays and to the prophetic meetings and to the evangelism meetings and to the inner healing meetings and to the prophetic arts uh, Lord, done to our staff in Jesus' name. Lord, I bless the mind of Jesus over us tonight in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you, Lord, for when we wake up tomorrow, we have a different mindset in Jesus' name. Lord, an elevated one, one that's in the heavens with you, one that can call on scripture, Lord. And you said that if we call on you, Father, you would show us great and mighty things which we didn't even know. And I thank you, God, for tonight. I thank you, Lord, for this place. God, I'm expectant and grateful for what's going to happen and what is happening right now. Lord, I thank you for the small miracles, the big miracles, because they're all miracles. We're victorious in Christ. You made us more than conquerors because of you being inside of us, Lord. You made us more than that. You said you would hear our prayers, Father. You would inhabit the praises of your people. Here we are, Lord. Here we are, praising you. Hearts abandoned, arms open wide. Lord, we love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We love your appearing Holy Spirit. We love when you abide here. We love when you shake us in worship. We love, Father, when you shake up situations. We love when you break up our monotony. We love, Father, when you give us something new, a new voice, a new tongue, Father. We love, Father, when you give us new desires in Jesus' name that are yours. Lord, we love your appearing, the Bible says. That this church will approve things that are excellent, that they're pure, and that, Father, when we leave and we come back, we don't forget who we are in you. Lord, this night, we don't forget who we are in you. That we come to services, Lord, ready because we know who we are in Christ. We do have your confidence, Lord. Lord, I breathe life on the minds in this room in Jesus' name. That, Lord, that we would do that 18-inch drop, that it would go from their minds to their hearts. And that, Father, we would receive it in our hearts. And just accepting who you are, God. Thank you for being a good father. Thank you for being an awesome savior, Lord. You never left us or forsaken us. Never, never, never. Holy Spirit, that thank you for being a guide to the truth. And, Lord, just another special prayer, Father, for our pastors their faithfulness, their commitment, their obedience, their solidarity. Their, they don't waver. They don't buckle. They don't bend. We thank you for bringing them here to lead this place, Lord. We thank you that they led and they started this. I thank you, Lord, that even he would tell you, it's not even him, it's you, Lord. And I'm so grateful for that. 
a leader who knows where his place is. Thank you, Lord, that you're the one driving this whole thing. And Lord, we just thank you. We're along for the ride. Go with us tonight, Father. Be with us tonight. In Jesus' name, I pray that we're strengthened in character tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us today at Revive Us Now at our YouTube channel. Remember to click that subscribe button to Revive Church and share this video with a friend. And if you'd like to support this ministry, go to reviveusnow.com forward slash give.